this is Jose. Here I am again with my 2017 Mercedes S550 or W222. Today I'm going to be talking about things to look for when you're buying a car. Uh, some of them are specific to this car, some of the things are uh, Mercedes related, and some of the things are uh, just in general, what you should look for when you're buying a car. Okay, um, this car has many sensors. Nowadays, every car has a lot of sensors and, and a lot of electronics that uh, you don't have to necessarily understand. You don't have to uh, know how they work. You just need to know that they're working. Like your, how you open your window, just open the window, close the window, a self-closing door, um, a heater seat, uh, air cooling seat, things like that. But um, um, you don't really need to understand how they work as long as they work. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's very general. You don't have to be a professional to know what car to buy and what car not to buy. It'll be better after you look at the car to take it to a professional so they can tell you, okay, yeah, you're buying a good car or you're buying a lemon car. So uh, I've separated this in five different sections. And um, the first section will be uh, when you find the car you like, okay? Um, the, second, the second section would be when you go see the car, then when you go inside the car, when you open the hood of your car, and when you drive the car, okay? And I'm gonna be talking about each one of them. So, and going through uh, each one of them as well. So, when you find the car you like, you go on the internet, you find a car, you went around, you saw a car, the first thing you need to know is find out if the car that they're selling you is in the same name of the person that's selling you the car. Uh, you don't wanna be scammed, you don't know if that car was stolen, so you gotta make sure that the, um, the person selling you the car is the owner of the car also, or has permission to sell you the car. Uh, you also have to find out if the title is clean. So ask them, you need to ask the person, is your title clean? Is it a salvage car? Was it flooded? You need to know all these things. And, and if the car is flooded or it was salvaged, it's not necessarily a bad car because they could have fixed it really good for you. And that's also a reason why the prices go down. So the title, will say that the car was the car was salvage. It has a little S on it and you'll see it and then um if it's salvage then you have to ask why, when, all these questions that that uh, if they have records they need to show you records that how they did it, how they fixed it, what was wrong with it. If they don't they're not able to provide any of that information you shouldn't get involved with that car. So um that's before you even uh, go to look at the car. And when you go look at the car, then you ask for that title so you can see it. You'll see that. Um, then you can see if they, if, before you go, sometimes people send you pictures. Sometimes people are not comfortable who send you a picture of the car. But uh, once you get there, you should ask to see that title. Okay. You need to know that the person selling you has the title, that it was paid for, that uh, it doesn't have a lien. So you look at that title, then you can proceed and continue with the with looking at the car. Okay, now, now we're here. Now we came to look at the car. So first look for the obvious. Make sure that um, there's no, uh, the car's not crashed, the bumpers are good, the headlights are good, the hood. Many people forget about the roof. Make sure you look at the roof, especially with taller cars, with, uh, with SUVs and stuff, you, you're not, you don't really see it. But if you have to, Put your, uh, your foot on the tire and you can step up and look at the car, okay? Um, there, you're not doing any damage to the car by just stepping on the tire. And nobody's going to have a problem with that. And if people have a problem with looking at the car, with opening hoods, with opening doors, you shouldn't get involved with that either. So they, if they don't have any problems, they should allow you to look at the car because you're buying the car. You need to know that the car is uh, is good, is safe, is secure, is uh, as good as it looks, and they shouldn't have a problem. So the obvious, first look at the, the, at that, look at the paint. Okay, when you look at the lines of the car, go against the light and see that the lines go all the way straight through, and um, there's no waves going down, okay? So look at the lines, that they're straight. Look at the gaps, make sure these are, are also Symmetrical, the, the, the same gap here that there is here all the way around the hood, the same here on the door. You check that those gaps are good on every, every door, okay? Every door, every panel, every bumper, every light, everything has to 
have the same uh, gap, okay? They're, they have to be straight. If they're not straight, something's wrong with the car, something happened, maybe an accident or something, but you need to find out what happened here, what's going on. So um, something else that you have to look for when you're going around, look inside the wheel, okay? The wheel well inside here. Make sure there's, there's, there's covers here. Make sure you see them. And also uh, that they're not cracked, that they're also in, in place, that there's no gaps here and there. Um, look at the tires. If they don't have big, a lot of tires have um, scratches on them. People parking hit the sidewalks, but there shouldn't be cracks on them. Uh, make sure the tires are good. Okay, the tires tell you a few things about a car. If you see that the tire has uh, uneven wear on the inside or outside, it could be a balancing issue, it could be a, an alignment issue, but it could also be a suspension issue, okay? So look at that. If you have a suspension issue, that's going to be very expensive to fix. Look at the back tire. The same thing. Is it wear even or uneven? Make sure you look at that. You go in the back, go everywhere, all around the car. You don't even need to get inside yet. You're just looking at the panels. Look at the, look at the trunk. Make sure all, everything is straight. Make sure the trunk closes correctly, opens and closes correctly. Make sure that every door opens and closes correctly. With this car, this car has a self-closing um, mechanism. So you, you push the door softly and it should close by itself. Okay, now we're going to start going around the car. These are things that you have to look for, okay? Mercedes Benz, the headlight. This is a very expensive headlight. So you gotta make sure that there's an original light that is in place, that there's no gaps, big gaps in between, that everything looks symmetrical, okay? They heard the same thing, everything has to look symmetrical. Okay, now these lights also have the Mercedes Benz badge on it. Those are the side mirrors. I say this has to be self closing. There you go. Here, the real light. Same thing. Mercedes Benz. Okay. All the gaps are correct. Checking all the gaps. Same thing here. Make sure this opens and closes nicely. No noise is coming out. All right. All the lights have to have this. Mercedes Benz. Check all the doors. Open and close fine. So it's not making any noise. It's not hitting anything. And here's the same thing. Mercedes Benz. Okay. Take a look at all the tires, make sure they wear evenly. Look at the wheel well, make sure they're there. All the covers, look at the bottom of the car. As I said, look at the lines, make sure they're straight. Okay, all the gaps seem okay. Check these, check the gas tank, same thing. You can also see how well the car is, is uh, the car is, is kept by looking in here. Is it clean? You know, people people have they, they they you know if they like the car, if they treated the car well, they clean it nicely. They keep it well, not just where you see. All right, you have to look at the, the roof, as I said. You have to look at the roof. You can also see if there's places where where you find. Uh, that they sound hollow. If they sound hollow, it's like they have bunda on it and they painted it at some point. Okay. Now the windshield. The windshield has a Mercedes-Benz engineer signature on it. Uh, in this case, it's Carl Benz. Okay. You have to have that. If you don't have a Mercedes-Benz windshield, is uh, it could be a problem. You know, they have uh, aftermarket windshields, but Mercedes recommends to put the same one. Of course, they recommend to put everything from their company, but these uh, windows and the windshield has have uh, UV protection and noise reduction technology so that when you're driving, you don't hear everything from outside. And also, so it keeps the car a little cooler in the sun. So it's a good idea 
to have those windows installed again. When you go see a car, you have to see it during the day. Don't go looking at a car at night where you can't see everything. Here's a little dark. Even here's, I will have a problem looking at a car. You have to be outside. It's better to be outside uh, with plenty of light and during the day. Don't go look at a car at night because you'll be missing a lot of things. Okay, and also one thing to look for on this car especially is the suspension. This car has an air suspension. Wait as long as possible to go into the car and turn it on, okay? As much as you can wait, wait, because the suspension, if it has a problem, is going to go down, okay? The car is going to go down. You're going to see it. The suspension sometimes in the front goes down, sometimes in the back. It has a leak or it has a, a problem there. So if the car is not sitting even, it has a problem. See, right now it's even and sits there. If you wait, wait a few minutes or if, uh, if the car is in contact and you hear that compressor running, then something might be wrong. Why is that running? So don't turn everything on. I have that on uh, for now so you can see the Mercedes batch on the lights. But um, wait, wait for a long time after you get there to see if the car goes down. You got to make sure that suspension is staying up. Okay. Very important to look at the suspension. Something very important is that you look at the car during the day. Don't go looking at the car at night. You could be missing a lot of things. Even here, I would have a problem looking at the car inside the garage. You have to go outside and look at the car with plenty of light. You, you want to make sure you're not missing any damages. You're not missing any damages uh, on the paint, on, on, on the body. And you're not going to, you know, you're not going to probably stop from buying the car because it has a dent or two and all that, or bad paint, maybe it won't stop you, but it's something that you can use to negotiate the price of the car. Okay, so now we're almost ready to go inside. Let's open the doors. We have to make sure that these doors are okay and that uh, the pillars are also in good shape. Okay, you have to look inside here, you have to look at these. You have to look at that, make sure everything is it's even. You have to make sure that everything is okay. Okay, now on this side, you have to make sure that this is, this was in the right place, that it doesn't have paint residue. Uh, if, you know, they could have taped this around, but you could still see paint residue on these, on every door. You gotta make sure the rescue card is here and it doesn't have any paint around it. Do you know what the rescue car is? Okay, if you scan these, if you scan the QR, you will see the safety uh, of these vehicles or, or what the, the seat belts are, where the the airbags, and a lot of information. Make sure you, you scan these on your car, you'll see. And every car is supposed to have this. It's, it helps um, as a rescue personnel to get you out of the car in case of a, an accident, any situation like that. All of these stickers, uh, check with these, check with the paint, check around and see if there's no paint residue. Uh, this will tell you, that paint residue will tell you that they did something to this car, that they that uh, they had to fix it. Also, these the hinges of the car, okay? The hinges of this door. And then go on the, every hinge of the of the car, every hinge, every door. Make sure they are in place. Okay. You have to make, you have to check on these also. The saddles, the seals. You have to see if they were replaced. This car has two different seals. See if they have even wear. Okay. If the car crashed, they might have changed this one and maybe not that one. All right. Ask questions. See if if they if you see one is newer than the other, just ask. Uh, uh, why did it, did it break? Did it, did it scratch? You didn't like it? You changed it? Why Why did you replace that? All these lines here should be straight. All right. So one important thing on these doors, at least on this Mercedes, uh, there's a code written and engraved on the bottom of the door. Okay. It's down here. 
on the panel, you're going to see an engraved number. Okay, let's see. Right there. This is at the bottom of the door. If you see that cover in any way, if you don't see that number, there's a problem. Okay, it might have bondo in it. It must have, uh, they could have uh, bond on sand and it's covered and then they could have painted it. They could have some extra paint on it. You have to be able to see that number. Okay, this is an original door. All right, one more thing to look for. Look at all this weather strip. You gotta make sure it's there. You gotta make sure it's firm. All this weather strip going around it. Every single door do that. On the windows, you should be able to see this. Mercedes logo, the codes, and the barcode. Okay, all these numbers from DOT and all that, and they all should match. On this core especially, they should all match. They should all be the same. All right, they should have that. Every window has that. So we go to the next door, and we do the same. Check the pillars. Should go around and see if they are in good shape. Check if this is in place. Check the seals, the saddles. Make sure they're worn evenly. The panel of the door also should be in good shape. And the same thing, every door has that coat on the bottom. Go on the bottom of the door, on the metal, and you'll see that engraved coat in there. That'll tell you that the door is um, original. It will tell you that the door hasn't been damaged. That is the original door and has never been damaged. So same thing as the front. We're going to check the weather strip. Okay, do the same for every door. Then go to the trunk and do the same thing. You're gonna, you're gonna have to check on the trunk everywhere because you don't know if there was a rear damage to this car. Now this car has a lot of um, uh, carpet and covers and all that. You know, might might you know might not be able to take all that out of a car. But check the weather strip. Check check that everything, all the molding is sitting correctly. All the weather strip, this plastic. There's no gas between the plastic and the panels. Okay, and it should open and close smoothly. Okay, now after you've looked at every door, every seal, every um, pillar, you're ready to go in the car. This is the moment you'll be waiting for. Okay, look at everything in your car. Look at everything in the car. Look at every button. Make sure everything is there. Make sure nothing is cracked, broken. Um, the seats are good. And again, you're not going to turn down the deal just because there's something broken or, or uh, worn out or something like that. It's a used car. It's expected. But um, it's something you could use to negotiate the price. Okay. Again, something major not just something simple okay i need a thousand dollar discount for this button no but uh something that you can use uh to negotiate the price all right so now once you're in the car it's time to um turn the car on for a minute and uh, make sure that uh everything works okay the person might have a problem or ask or tell you not to do something if they have a problem, then the car's a problem, don't get the car. So you want to open the roof, you want to open all, and close all the windows. You want to check the radio, the navigation, everything the car has. Check absolutely everything. Don't miss anything. Uh, turn the wipers on. Um, press every button. This car has air suspension, so you have a button there to go up and down. You're going to see here in the center. Okay, the suspension will go up and down once you press the button. Uh, check the radio, put, put the radio up and down, go through the menus, check the seats, see if they move. Um, ask as many questions as you have now. All the questions that you have for the inside of the car, 
uh, or the history of the car, see if they have any maintenance records. Very important if you have maintenance records. So we have to try every band, right? So uh, here's the uh, what I was talking about, the suspension. You're going to put the suspension up. You have to click on it. You have to put it up. Uh, that only works if the car is on. So you're briefly going to have the car on and um, and start uh, looking at things inside, okay? So let's turn this car on. Okay. See what lights are on. Well, in this case, we don't have anything. But make sure nothing is on, especially if the check line lights on. Don't, don't get involved with that. You don't want the check the you don't want that uh, that headache, okay? If they want to sell you the car saying that the check engine is on, but they know it's something simple, okay, something simple, just fix it and I'll get back to you. But uh, here you press these and the suspension is gonna go up, okay? The car is gonna show you it says vehicle rising. There you go. Okay, stop it, finish. And it's gonna stay red. Now you can press it again to make it go down. Make sure no errors come in the dash. Okay, great. So same thing. We're gonna check the the sunroof. Make sure it opens. You gotta check everything. Make sure it opens. Make sure it closes. It works. Good. Same thing with windows. Okay, in the back, they, we have those curtains. Make sure they go up and down. There you go. I mean, and then the window itself, it works. And check all the windows, of course. Make sure all of them work. Same thing in the back. Okay, so after you're satisfied with the inside of the car, you check everything, no lights are on, and everything, you're gonna have, you need to connect your car. If you buy one of these, not only, it's not gonna work only for this car, it's gonna work for many cars, so you can use these to check your cars, your other cars, if you have other cars for faults, and even when you buy the car after that, you know, if there's any, any light that comes on, you plug it in, it'll tell you, if the car uh, has a problem or not, what code it has. So this is the one that you connect to the to the, your cell phone. It, I think it costs about $20, $25 in Amazon. Or you can get a, uh, another one that is a little more sophisticated. This communicates with the car both ways. And you can send commands to the car. The car tells you on that what it has. It all depends on how much you want to spend. There's other that are dedicated for Mercedes or BMWs or Porsche, whatever you have. Uh, but just work for that kind of car, specific car. The ones I have are for multiple cars. So after you've plugged that in and check for codes and everything seems okay, then you should shut off the car, get out, and go to open the hood. Okay? Now, let's open the hood and work towards the front. Okay, so now we're ready to look at the engine, and when you go look at the car, it's a good idea to have a flashlight. But when you go around the car, even then, you need to have a flashlight. Also look underneath the car to see if there's any leaks while you're going around and looking at the tires and, and things and wheel wells. So see if there's anything leaking underneath. Okay, some of, uh, a lot of these cars in Mercedes have a lot of covers underneath, so you might not even see that, but you have to look in the engine to check on that. So ask the owner to take the cup, the, the covers off. If they, if they don't want to take it off, ask them if you can do it. So before you go to your investigations and see how they how they open, so you can take them off and, not, and don't break anything, okay? But uh, you need to take those off. So ask them that, ask them to take them off for you. And if they do have a problem and don't want to take anything off, it's because they might be hiding something. So you have to take those off. You have to look at the entire car before you purchase it. You don't want to buy a, a car that's badly damaged and leaking. So here, you're going to see the car. If the car is too clean, 
He's very clean. It's spotless everywhere. It could be that the person is a is a car freak and and they love to see their car clean everywhere. But also, it could be that they just cleaned the car because there was leaks. There were there was um, some um, uh, problems with the engine, leaks on the cooling system, leaks on the, any everywhere. It could be leaks from many liquids on the car. So make sure you check on all of that. Um, especially with Mercedes cars and especially with the big engines, they have problems with the position sensors and the adjusted magnet sensors, okay? And this car has two on each side, uh, two adjuster magnets and two position sensors. So you have to check on them and see if they're leaking, okay? If they leak, uh, if they're leaking a little bit just underneath, it's not, it's not a problem. But if you take the, the, if you see that leak, then take the plugs out because they could be leaking into the wiring. And one, that's one of the big problems with these cars that um, the oil leaks into the wiring and it goes through the main man harness into the computer and it damages a lot of stuff. So uh, the repairs for that is about $15,000. So you don't want to get into that. But if you see a leak on the position sensor or the cam adjusted magnet, but you take the plug off and there's no oil there, then you could still, you still go ahead with it because replacing those is not too bad. If you take it to the dealer, it's a lot of money. But if you do it yourself, it's not. And, and you can see one of my videos on link that I put the link below that how to replace those and um, many different cars. It's, it's the same procedure, the same thing. So, um, but Mercedes especially, they tend to leak into the wiring because of the way the wiring is. Uh, they have some also some something after you you buy the car. There's a, there's a, a a safety a safety for that. They sell these extension wires, and that I also have a video for. So you can. Also look into that after you change your, your magnets, you put those uh, those extensions in, they're called pigtails or sacrificial harnesses, then you can get rid of that problem, uh, but always keep an eye on that. So the cooling, you have to make sure the cooling is, 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 is good, that there's no leak uh, signs of that on the main one, on the secondary one. This secondary cooling is for the inner cooler check if there's any leaks below right in the front there's some engines that are sideways going there check and see if there's no leaks okay this is easy to uh, spot any leaks in front on the camshafts uh, everything looks dry there's no corrosion anywhere look at the brake fluid the brake fluid the, this is the core for the brake fluid go check the level check the level on the on the brake fluid because uh if it's all the way up it means that they uh, recently did the brakes they could also just stop it off but uh, when you go in the car and before you start driving, pump the brakes. Make sure they work because you don't want to go driving that car and then you um, get into an accident because there's no brakes. So see the level, see uh, there's nothing around it that calls your attention, nothing bad. Check all the fluids, check hoses, check the belt. See if the belt looks good. So you see how, how good or how bad the belt is. So if you see the engine and it's spotless, very clean, there's no oil leaks, but you, you can also tell when there's something was just wiped off. So you see that wiped off, the, the oil just, uh, wait for later, it's, the engine's clean, okay, it could be that somebody likes to keep their cars very clean, they, they take their time opening the, the, the engine bay and cleaning everything. I clean on top, I don't go, I don't go under my car, of course. Uh, something major I'll clean it up and keep it clean but the, there's dust constantly going in there so I don't really go under the covers and, and clean everything uh, detail all the time but some people do so wait for afterwards after you go for your drive you check this engine again because if uh, after you drive and you go and you drive the car for at least 10 miles and city and highway you have to get on the highway so after you drive the car you come again and check those fluids okay uh, just let the car, when you come back, just let the car cool off before you start touching anything, okay? So open the hood, let it cool off, and then you start checking again. So one well, important thing to look for is here, you open the, the, the oil cap, okay? You should have only oil in here, okay? There's only oil, there's nothing extra, no corrosion, nothing uh, nothing that calls your, your attention. If the cover has some milky stuff on it, on the, on the top side, it could be a sign of um, a head gasket blown, so the, the, the oil, of course, might be leaking outside that, but also the coolant can be, can be going into the engine. So it could be a number, numerous things, but it, there's, there's, if there's a, 
uh, milky substance on the cap, you'll know that there's some coolant definitely going into the into the oil side of the engine. So another place to look for, for leaks is where the oil filter is. Okay, the oil filter is right here on this side, the right side of the car. On the left side of the car, if you're looking at the engine, it's on your right side. Uh, see, you can you can put your hand around, touch around, see if you have any oil on your on your hands. Same thing, the camshafts go below and see if there's any oil. There's no oil in this car anywhere. I recently replaced all of those, put the extensions, those sacrificial harnesses, I've done a lot of maintenance. If you've seen my videos, you've seen all these maintenance I've done, and I'm I'm, I'm gonna be doing a couple more videos on maintenance items uh, uh, soon. But uh, check out all those videos to see how all these things work and how they're done, so that you know that you can make your maintenance. You can do all your maintenance in your car, and it's everything is 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 simple. If you do your maintenance on your on your Honda, on your Hyundai, or your Toyota, or your Kia, any car is the same thing. This seems a little more complicated. It just looks complicated because it has a lot of sensors and com the computer's right there. So it's intimidating, all these covers that the car has. So it looks like it's, it's too much, but it's not. It's simple. You'll see them in the videos. Then you can take care of every single maintenance item on this. I changed the bell, I changed the pulleys. I've changed a few things. And like I said, I'm gonna do a couple more videos on this and you're gonna see how simple it is. So you can save a lot of money doing the maintenance yourself. And uh, it's not impossible to get a car like this. Okay, people, a lot of a lot of people get afraid of buying a Mercedes because of the maintenance cost, but you could do the maintenance yourself. There's mechanics that are afraid of that because they're saying it's a sealed engine, it's a sealed car, or whatever. It's not true. I don't know why mechanics get intimidated when they're doing this every single day. Some mechanics, some mechanics are, they just do everything that comes to them. I know, I know some great mechanics. I have a friend that's a mechanic, and he's really good. He works on every single car. He's not afraid of a 50-year-old car, 60-year-old car, or a 1-year-old car. He's not afraid of touching any car. It's because they're the same. And just having worked in the same way for many years, they're the, the same thing. This car has eight cylinders. Some cars have two. Uh, no, sorry, the motorcycles have two, but some cars have four. Some cars have six cylinders, but it's, it's basically the same same operation. So... Now, after you check the car, after you change, you check the engine, now you put everything back or ask the owner to put everything back, stay here and ask the person to go inside the car and turn it on. Okay, you want to hear the engine. You want to you see how it sounds. You want to see that there's no, nothing uh, crazy going around, that uh, nothing starts pushing oil while you're here or in the, the noise especially. You don't... You want to be here in case you hear any knocking, any, any, uh, or the engine moving, moving around. You want to see all of that. So um, then, after you hear, you heard him, uh, you hear the engine. He turned it on. The, the the owner turned it on. Then you can go for a drive. Okay. Now you're you're good. You're safe. You check the fluid that is is level. Now you go inside and check the brakes. Make sure the car is going to brake when you're accelerating. Part of your inspection on the on the engine bay should also be that the bolts on the um, the bolts on on the sides and the front they're all original that there's no paint different or paint peeling or anything that uh, calls your attention here. All the bolts should look in place. Everything should be in place. The grill, okay. Check everything. Everything in the engine bay. The wipers. Look at everything. Look at the look at the hood also. Look at the top of the hood. Right here, look at all those bolts. Okay, make sure everything is in place. This bolt, they should all look original with the paint and everything. Look at these underneath the car. Everything should be okay. The hinges, okay, bolts everywhere. They tell you a lot. All right. Latches. Look at the radiators as much as you can see. Make sure you look in there. Everywhere in the engine. You have to see everything. And you don't have to be a professional to look at this. 
Just look at a bolt. Is the paint peeling? Okay, something happened. Look at another bolt over there. Bolts uh, have paint on it. Something is going on. This it doesn't look in place. It looks like it's moved. Something is wrong. Okay, something happened to that car. Ask questions. If you see something, ask questions. See what they tell you. All right, now we're ready to ride, drive the car. Let's see. Now we're ready. Uh, position your mirrors. Make sure everything is working. See if both mirrors work, even if they are in place. Just make sure they work. Touch them. Make sure you move them. Okay, go to the left, go to the right. Make sure all of them are working. Even if, like I said, even if they're in place, just make sure you, you move them just to see. Put your seatbelt on. See if the light goes on and off for your seatbelt. You got to make sure that light works. It could also be some problems there. Now, <clears throat> as you go and drive, I said, like I said before, pump your brakes, check your brakes, and make sure they're working right before you start. And then you move the car a little bit and stop and see if it works. If uh, if um, the car doesn't stop, you, you you get out of that car. Stop the car, park it, turn it off, and leave. You, you don't you don't want to get in trouble with that car. You don't want to drive that car. You only drive the car if it's drivable. If it's not working, if the brakes are not working, it's not drivable. So uh, start driving the car. Go slow. Go in the city. Go here and there. Make turns. Make sure you make turns. And uh, if if there's little potholes, you go in the little potholes, see how the car reacts, uh, see how it sounds, okay? So what you're doing is you don't want any radios on. You don't want that air conditioning blasting. You don't want that heat blasting. You don't want that noise um, stopping you from listening to what's going on with the car. So stop any conversations. That's why I said before when you were checking inside the car, that's when you have all the conversations, all the questions. And if you have a question or two while you're driving, slow down a little bit, have the question uh, answered, and then keep going and, and pay attention to what you're doing. You have to really pay attention to what you're driving. Again, you don't need to be a professional to know what's wrong with the car. You just have to listen. You just have to pay attention. You're driving, you hear a, a bang, something hitting. You hear the, the, you see the steering wheel moving weird, uh, just like kind of shaking. It's no good. Something's wrong with that suspension. Something's wrong with the braking system. If you, um, the car should drive smoothly, uh, no no shaking of the steering wheel, no shaking of uh, the, the car. Uh, well, it's normal for the car to vibrate a little bit. Like right now, this car is on. There's nothing moving. There's nothing shaking. There's no crazy noise going on. Now, with a Mercedes, because these windows are uh, so thick, all the windows on this car are thick, you're not going to be able to hear anything outside. So when you, you have to drive with your windows down. Okay, you got to make sure you drive with the windows down. Because... Just like that, you're not going to be able to hear anything. And with any car, you should really put your windows down to hear what's going on. You hear any squeaking from the, when you're braking, from when you're accelerating, from when you're turning. You have to make sure that there's no squeaking, no noises, no nothing. It sounds like it's cracking. And um, that's the way to look at the car. You have to make sure you do all of that. Now, after a little bit, after a little driving, you don't hear anything, fine. And then you go into, try to find a parking lot. Try to have a, uh, find a big space where you can make tight turns. Don't go fast. Don't go crazy. You don't need to go do donuts and see if the car works now. So you just turn all the way quick and see if the car turns without any problems. Turn all the way right, see if the car turns uh, without any problems, any noises. And make sure that the wheels are not touching the fenders when you're turning, but you have to go all the way. Like I said, drive slow. You don't need to go uh, fast to, to be able to uh, make sure that this is working correctly. Then after all that, go on the highway. After all of these, you have made sure that the car drives good, is steady, the brakes are working, you're making these turns, and the suspension sounds good, sounds bad. You, you've known all of that. Now you can go on the highway. you got to make sure you go on the highway. Because once you, you go past 40, 50, 60, the car is going to might act different. Okay, if there's a suspension problem, the car is going to start moving. If you're braking at, at 60, it's going to start, it, it could start doing something. Okay, so you have to make sure you go on the highway. And when you go on the highway, see if the, if the, the gears are changing. Just look, listen for, to the car, see if, uh, and, and feel the car as, as you're going. So, uh, and many of these cars, like this electronic transmission, you're not really going to feel that change in, in, in gears. 
it's supposed to be like that. You're not supposed to really feel anything with this type of car. So, but you look at it. You look at the at the RPMs going. The RPMs is the one on the right. Okay, this one goes up and down. It has uh, number zero to to eight, zero to nine. Some you know different cars have different numbers, but you'll see it going up, and when it changes gear, it goes down, and then it changes gear, it goes down again, and it goes up. It changes gear, it goes down, and it goes up again. It changes gear, it goes down, and it goes up again. So you're gonna see that moving until it just stays there. Okay, so you're going, eh, kind of like that. So, and uh, that you hear on another car. On this car, you're not going to hear, but you hear that or you feel it when you're making those those gear changes or the car is making those gear changes. If it's a manual transmission, you'll feel that more than in an automatic transmission car. But the RPMs go up and go down. That is your signal. All the car is making changes. The car is making the changes, changing the gears. If you hear the transmission getting stuck, so what you're gonna hear is the car just just accelerating, and the RPMs just stay up and don't move and don't move and don't move, and, and the car sounds like it's trying, it's forcing itself. The the engine sounds loud because it's, it's it's too forced. So the the gears are not changing because the car is supposed to keep going to the highest speed, uh, to the highest uh, gear, so it saves gas, so it drives it smooth. So you don't hear any of that. So this car goes fast through gears. This car has nine speeds, nine uh, nine gears. So um, that transmission is gonna go quickly to nine when you are in the highway. The high, the car is always gonna drive as high on gear as possible. So listen to for that, um, and then uh, when you're driving, make sure the the auto stop and start works okay so that's when you come to a stop you get out of the highway you come again to the, or even when you were going to the highway and then when you're coming back so you when you stop at the light when you stop at the stop sign see if the the car stops and the car just shuts off when you're pushing the brakes okay you come to complete stop the car just shuts off with this car with the with the mercedes with the s-class it's very sensitive so you are the minute you push the gas it's going to shut off right away there's some cars that you have to really push and stay there, and then the car will shut off. Like my other car, my my Dodge Durango. You have to push the brakes all the way. The car comes to a complete stop, and then the automatic stop will will start. So with this car, this car is a lot more sensitive than that one. So and then you 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 let the brake go, let the brakes go, and you push the brakes again. It, it will go automatically again off. So on that car, it just it, it don't go stop anymore until you wait for a little a few seconds. Or maybe milliseconds, but it waits a little longer. This one is very sensitive, and you want to you want to make sure that works because if um, it could be a number of things, but mainly uh, batteries, the main battery and the auxiliary battery. If the main battery is bad, it's expensive battery, um, especially if you get the original battery. You don't need to get the original battery. You can look at my videos and see which battery I put in. Uh, different batteries work as long as you reset the count or register the battery. Uh, you'll find use in any other battery, but the main battery could be bad. The auxiliary battery could be bad, and peop many people just think that the auxiliary battery is, is that's the that's the reason the auto stop is not working because of the auxiliary battery. That's a smaller battery, cheaper battery, but it could be the main battery also. The car itself is not going to shut off if um, the car knows that the bat the main battery is not good because it knows it's not going to be able to start. So the main battery could be bad also. Okay. If the car knows, again, if the car knows that it's not going to be able to start again, it's not going to shut off. So the main battery could be bad also. Ask the, uh, ask the, 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 uh, the for the records again. It, it could show you there on the records the, man, the battery was changed last year, was changed two years ago, three years ago. If the battery is over two years old and there's problems with electronics, with the auto stop and start, I would automatically change the, the main battery. And if they can change it for you before you buy it, or get it, you can also, that's another thing that you can negotiate for the price to go down. Now, there could also be something simple that is the same, that the light is, is just turned off. You, the, you, the automatic stop and start is off. So you make sure that button is on and the automatic uh, uh, stop and start works. So um, another step I, uh, I forgot to mention while we were on the highway. When you're there on the highway, you gotta make sure the cruise control is on. Uh, it works. So you put the cruise control on. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's the bottom lever here on the on the left side. 
you have three levers actually. One at the top is the signals, the the wipers, and all that. And the, and right below that is the the cruise control. So you you set the cruise control with that. And what and there's a smaller one in front of that is to to move the steering. But uh, L adjust the steering also. So make sure you uh, check in that when you when you when you sit in there, you can adjust this steering. There you go. And um, again, back to the cruise control, you have to make sure it works. It could be a number of things. Okay, this car also has an automatic braking system. So uh, um, when something is in front of you, when a person is in front of you, the car is going to st stop by itself. Okay. Um, so get close to something, make sure those lights go on. And, and you could also back up and see the, there's lights that show you on the dash if something is in the back. And also there's some uh, right uh, above the window over there, there's lights that show you that you're getting close to something in the back. Uh, but that those are the main the main things uh, light lights as far as lights you can also check if the brake lights are working you know, and, and and all that but uh, it's hard for them to 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 go because they're all leds but when they go they're very expensive to replace so especially the front lights those are very expensive when this car uh, is 2017 uh, each one of those is about two thousand dollars so you, you, if they're not working, something that uh, could be replaceable, you can change it. But you have to. There's something that you, another thing to, to another item to negotiate with the person that's selling you the car. So uh, make sure those lights are are on and they're working. Same thing with the rear lights. After you're satisfied with the with the car, with everything uh, that you've looked is 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 fine. Everything is working. Uh, see if you can take it to a professional. Um, they will charge you to check for the car, they, but they will lift the car. They put it on, uh, on on something that you can see underneath to make sure everything is good. And when they do that, ask them to change to check the the wheels. See if the wheels are good. Look at the inside of the wheels to see if they're cracked, if they were welded. Um, I I've, I bought a car once that had a, a cracked wheel. And uh, the only way to see it is if either you, either you take the tire, the wheel off or you really get on the lift and look at each tire. So when the, uh, the professional know what, know, knows what, the, what it's doing, but ask them to, to, to check on that just in case they miss it. And uh, if, they, if, if they let you look, you go ahead and look at everything underneath. But some, some shops, a lot of shops don't allow you to go in there and, and see for yourself. They will also put the car in a computer. They will go through everything the way you did, but um, in more detail. They know specifically what to look for. But you don't want to go straight to a mechanic with a car that you didn't look at because they're going to charge you for it. And if you're going to take every car you see to a mechanic, it's going to pile up and all that. You know, it's going to spend a lot of money just for looking at a car. And after you look at four cars, you're looking at a lot of money. So. First, look at the car. If the check engine light is on, if they want to fix it, have them fix it, and then and then look at the car again. But don't buy the car with the check engine light on because you don't know what's what's there. And then, if you check with your with your computer with your scanner, then you'll know what it is. You can you can figure from there. Maybe look at it, then go to your mechanic, and the mechanic could tell you, okay, this is what's wrong with the car. Is okay to buy? It's not okay to buy. So if it is simple, the mechanic could tell you, but I would just stay away from cars with check engine lights. If it's simple, they can fix it, then I can look at the car. So that's it. I think I've covered everything. And if you have any questions or comments, put them below. I will put the links for my uh, maintenance videos so that uh, you see how easy it is to maintain this car, to, to um, change oils, to change every fluid. Uh, I'm I'm still working on a couple of fluids, but uh, on those videos they'll be coming soon. But you can do all the maintenance on this car. It's a, it's it's a, a car that is maybe um, expensive to fix or to maintain if you take it to a dealer, or if you take it to a mechanic. Even more when you take it to the dealer. But there's there's items that you can do yourself. Many of them you can do yourself. And there's there's uh, cars. There's Mercedes that. 
uh, are very cheap and and the and the prices of used cars of Mercedes are lower than some of the other cars than a regular car because the maintenance cars people get afraid of that they're saying that or, or they think that they're going to pay a lot of money they're going to have to they're going to be in debt they're going to be always the mechanic they're going to be always at the dealer when in fact you can do those maintenance items yourself save all that money and uh, and have a nice car with all these features, all these LED lighting, with all the safety features. This is one of the safest cars I've ever owned. It has a lot of airbags uh, on the bottom, on the steering, on the sides, everywhere. So um, don't get afraid of buying one of these just because of the maintenance. Okay, the maintenance is simple. This car will last a very, very long time. I, I have seen Mercedes with 400,000 miles, with 450,000 miles, and the car is still running perfectly. As long as you do your maintenance, the car will last you forever. If if you don't do your maintenance, no car is going to last. And, and even another car, Honda, Toyota, you do your maintenance, that car is going to last for a very, very long time. Any car you buy, you do your maintenance uh, at times or even before, like I do before time, I just go ahead and do my maintenance. As long as you do it, the car is going to last a very, very long time, but especially for Mercedes. I love Mercedes, and and these cars will last you a very, very, very long time as long as you do your maintenance. And it's even better if you do it. When you do it, you know why you're doing to your car. You know what type of oil you're using, what kind of foods you're using, and 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 not just something generic that they use at a, at a mechanic shop or a, even at the dealer. I don't know what they use at the dealer. They say they use the, the, the good stuff, but who knows, really? So, but when you do it yourself, you know exactly what's going into your car, and that way you know your car will be protected and it will last a very long time. So, be safe. Please make sure you check out all of these before you buy your car, and that way you'll know you won't be getting a lemon. Okay, that's it for me. So, I hope you liked the video. And look at the other ones. Check out all the videos that are very important for you to uh, understand the way the, this car works and understand that uh, how the maintenance has to be done. Okay? Take care.